गुड मॉर्निंग टू हंड्रेड ऑल प्रसन्न हो गया मैं सिर्फ डॉक्टर एल एन बरस एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर ब्लैंक्स टू डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग इन दिस वीडियो वी हैव टू डिस्कस अबाउट द एसी मशीन्स सो दिस सब्जेक्ट मेनली डील्स विद द फोर्थ सेमेस्टर सेकंड ईयर टू स्टूडेंट्स फर्स्ट यूनिट वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट दिस सिंगरनेस जनरेटर here the this class we have to discuss about this constructional details of synchronous generator various types of rotor design of synchronous generator then emf equation of synchronous generator then synchronous reactance armature reaction voltage regulation methods emf emmf zpf method so these topics are Going to discuss it in this class. So first, uh, AC machines. Uh, it can be classified in two types: uh, synchronous machine, asynchronous machine. So synchronous machine. It can be classified in two types: uh, synchronous generator, synchronous motor. Similarly, asynchronous machine. It is also named as induction machine. It can be. classified in two types induction generator induction motor so synchronous generator it is the primary source of electrical energy here in case of synchronous motor it is used as a motor as, a, as well as power factor compensator or synchronous condenser in the transmission line induction generator due to lack of the separate field excitation these induction generators are rarely used as a generators so induction motor it is the most widely used electrical motors in both domestic and industrial applications so these are the overall introduction about the ac machines and today we discuss about the only synchronous generator so synchronous generator already we discussed about the definition of synchronous generator it is an electrical machine which converts mechanical power into an electrical power it works on the principle of faraday's law of electromagnetic induction principle uh, types of synchronous machine uh, both synchronous generator and synchronous motor occur in to the arrangement of the field and armature winding here the synchronous machine which consists of two windings field winding and armature winding or stator winding so based on this arrangement of the field and armature winding synchronous machines may be classified as stationary armature and rotating field system stationary armature winding rotating field winding system so it is only applicable for above 5 kva synchronous generator second type stationary field system rotating armature system So it is only applicable for below 5 kva synchronous generator. So based on the rating of the synchronous generator, it can be two types: stationary armature, rotating armature. So if if you if we increase in the rating of the capacity, means we cannot collect the heavy current or heavy voltage from the rotating part. So that's why we can uh, modify the designing of the synchronous machine so there are two machine two designs are that stationary armature system rotating armature system here the advantages of stationary armature and rotating field system uh, very very first point it is uh, better insulation because the high voltage ac winding and its insulation not subject to the centrifugal force so that's why better insulation in the advantages of stationary armature and rotating field system so mostly 11 kv to 33 kv can be taken out uh, taken from the stationary armature winding so second advantage is of stationary armature and rotating field system it is easier to collect large currents from the stationary part that is a stationary armature winding 
we have to easily collect the large currents from that stationary part it is very 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 easy compared to rotating part because rotating part uh, we have to need for the commutator brushes or something arrangements are that but only small amount of voltage and current only taken or given to the rotating part only in stationary part we have to collect the large currents from the stationary members it is very easier that is the advantages of stationary armature under rotating field system so third one the rotating field makes overall construction is simple in case of rotating part the construction part is very very simple part that is a field winding in the rotating part is very very simple so fourth one the problem of sparking at the slipping slipping can be avoided so only low voltage can be applied across the rotating part so due to low voltage and current the problem of sparking is avoided can be avoided so fifth one ventilation arrangement for high voltage can be improved in case of stationary part ventilation arrangement for the stationary part is very very easy arrangement is very very simple so sixth one for the low voltage for example so 110 voltage to 220 voltage the dc excitation it can be supplied through the springs and brushes to the rotor rotor field windings it is easier to apply the low voltage 110 voltage to 220 voltage to the rotating part of the field winding so seventh one it is the noiseless running is possible so air gap length is uniform uh, these are the overall advantages of stationary armature and rotating field systems so finally the mechanical balancing is better better in the rotor part so next uh, we discussed about the construction of alternator so synchronous generator it is also named as alternator because uh, it uh, alternating supply it is an electrical machine which converts the mechanical power into electrical power the electrical power may be an alternating supply so that's why it is also named as alternator so alternator uh, we discussed about the only stationary armature under rotating field system here the alternator which has three phase winding on the stator part stationary part and the field winding dc field winding on the rotating part that is rotor in case of stator three phase windings are there in rotor field winding sir that so first stator here the uh, diagram is available so uh, this part is stator part so number of slots are provided there so armature winding sir placed inside of the slots here the rotating part here the rotating part of the synchronous generator or alternator here uh, why it is called as a stator means it is a stationary part of the machine it is built up of silicon steel lamination core that is named as stampings with the slots provision is that it is used to hold the armature conductors so uh, silicon steel lamination why silicon steel lamination is it is used to reduce the eddy current losses and hysteresis losses so silicon content it is used to reduce the hysteresis losses lamination uh, stampings are used for the purpose of reducing the eddy current losses so it may be applicable only for the higher rating machines uh, mostly uh, alternator the armature winding is connected in star connections because we have to need for the neutral terminals r y b uh, a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 or u1 u2 b1 b2 w1 w2 so any starting terminals or ending terminals combined together we can form the neutral terminals so this is the only the stat, uh, stator part only and diagram which indicates here the stator core laminated iron core with slots are available this is a steel housing so instead of the steel uh, instead of the steel housing we can include the stator core stator windings are there you can zoom the stator part the coils are placed inside of the slots okay 
this is the coils coil coil sides iron cores this is the laminated constructions laminated stampings the coil entering uh, coil in winding sir went to the to form the armature winding uh, here the only one set of coils are displaced here here the one slot occupies two coil sides that's why it is called as a double layer winding here the one slot here this is the one of the slot one slot which occupies one coil side and another coil side also it is called as a double layer winding the next uh, rota part so the, there are two types of rotas we have to design it one is a saline pole type it is also named as projected pole type non saline pole type it is also named as non projected pole types or smooth cylindrical type why we have to uh, design the two types of rotor means based on the turbine speed so some of the part we only available for low speed so low speed uh, turbine is available means we can design for the saline pole construction high speed turbine is available means we can design for the non saline pole construction type so first we discussed about the saline pole type projected pole type rotor construction uh, here the diagram which indicates the saline pole type rotor construction here the poles are projected outside of the core coils are wounded to over the iron core it is connected in series it to produce an alternate north and south pole we have to give the dc supply to the field when means it will produce alternate north and south pole so mostly feature of the saline pole type uh, construction you know, it has larger diameter and shorter axial length it has larger diameter but short axial length so then only we have to apply the only low speed it is only applicable for only low speed here it is also called as projected poles here the poles are mounted on the larger circular frame uh, the, it is also made up of thick silicon steel lamination for the purpose of eddy current losses and uh, to reduce eddy current losses and hysteresis losses here the field winding which are connected in series but winding uh, coil winding is alternately clockwise and clockwise winding uh, then only to produce an alternate north and south pole the ends of the field winding are connected to the dc supply through slip rings only so main features of the saline pole type alternator or rotor construction larger diameter and short axial length here the poles are laminated to reduce eddy current losses already we discussed it in this point so see this type of construction only employed for the low and medium speed so low and medium speed type of alternator the turbine speed is 120 rpm to 500 rpm so mostly it is suitable for the diesel or hydraulic turbines the prime mover of the synchronous generator this type of construction of uh, uh, synchronous generator diesel and hydraulic turbines so this type of construction cannot be used for the larger speed due to the weaker mechanical strength here the one of the very important topic is damper winding this type of concerns we have to need for the damper winding so why means the uh, damper winding is used to reduce the hunting effect that is we can we have to arrest the oscillation uh, here the rotor construction the there is an unequal air gap is available and also mechanically weak weak construction so uh, we have to arrest the hunting effect or oscillation of rotor means to provide the damper winding so damper winding it is nothing but copper bars copper bars of the winding it is uh, saw circuit with the endings it is mounted on the fold faces each pole face uh, this is a front a front view of the saline pole alternator construction armature winding and rotor windings with field winding rotor with field windings 
here the three pair supply is taken outside of the supply and here the dc supply is given to the field winding through slipping and presses this is the rotor pole only in the iron core iron core iron part the next type of construction non saline pole type of rotor so it is in the shape of cylindrical shape smooth cylindrical rotor it is also named as turbo alternator the field winnings used in the high speed alternators they will be steam turbine so mostly this type of construction is uh, employed for the steam turbine so main features of non saline pole type rotor smaller diameter and larger axle length it is opposite to saline pole construction but same rating also here the number of slots are provided outside of the iron core here the diagram which indicates only two poles north and south poles so in this type of construction it produces only less wind stress losses the maximum speed is 3000 rpm minimum speed is 1200 rpm and also better balancing compared to saline pole construction it produce it provides better balancing nice stress operation also there flux distribution nearly sine wave form because equal air gap length is uh, air gap uh, air gap is formed in that uh, starter and rotor part we got to distribute flux distribution is nearly sine wave form so we know that the frequency of the supply is 50 hertz ns equal to 120 f to the 5p that is a single speed of the alternator 120 f to the 5p f equal to supply frequency p equal to number of poles ns equal to single speed in rpm so this is the three dimensional view of non saline pole type rotor construction without winding non saline pole type iron core only iron core and the soft is available here the so next we discussed about the emf equation of an alternator Uh, before going for the derivation we have to de de define for the we have to define for the some parameters uh, because uh, faraday's law of electromagnetic induction we have to need for the field winding and the armature winding any one of the winding may be in rotatable we are the let to consider for the flux the field winding which produces an flux that's why we have to define for the flux per pole the unit of the flux equal to weber so number of poles so how many number of poles are there in the synchronous generator so that is the one of the constant part p equal to number of poles so ns equal to synchronous speed in rpm is it equal to total number of armature conductors or coil size connected in series per phase is it equal to total number of armature conductors here the this is the this is the mandy circuit this is the electrical circuits so is it total number of arms to connected it is also equivalent to 2t where t equal to total number of coils or turns per phase number of turns per phase is it equal to two times of because one turn consists of two coils says so then only we have to use for the one turn which consists of two conductors so to totally is it equal to 2t so t phase it is a turns in series per phase so number of slots multiplied by number of conductors per slot divided by 2 into 3 so number of turns per phase uh, with the help of this formula we can define uh, we can uh, determine the turns per phase number of conductors per phase Z phase. Z phase is equal to Z by three. Total number of conductors by three, because number of phases is equal to three only. R Y B. So in case uh, all the type of uh, alternator, 
windings we have used for the distributed winding so some constant parameters are can be utilized kc or kp that is a pitch factor or coins one factor another factor constant factor kd that is a distribution factor the combination of kp and kd it is also named as winding factor kw equal to kp into kd so it is only include including of distributed winding so kp equal to cos alpha by 2 kd equal to sin m beta by 2 divided by m sin beta by 2 so these are the parameters we have to define before going for the derivation of the emf equation of alternator uh, consider only uh, one cycle positive cycle and negative cycle here the x-axis we have to define about uh, we can represent the only time duration y-axis it is an induced emf the maximum induced emf is available at the omega t equal to 90 degree so minimum voltage is available at 0 degree 180 degree and 360 degree only we can consider only once complete cycles only and also we can consider only for single conductor placed in a slot we can consider only single conductor placed in a slot for simplification purpose uh, first we can determine the average induced emf in a single conductor that is e average equal to flux cut in one revolution divided by time taken for one revolution so average induced emf in a conductor that is e average equal to flux cut in one revolution divided by time taken for one revolution that is a plus cut in one revolution equal to d5 time taken for one revolution equal to dt that is total flux cut in one revolution d5 equal to plus pi into p uh, we have to use only p number of poles this p number of poles which produce only flux per flux in Weber's you can multiply the flux pi into p we can get the total flux cut in one revolution so time taken for one revolution dt equal to 60 divided by ns so one minute uh, 60 seconds are available 60 divided by ns so total number of speed equal to single mass speed ns 60 divided by ns equal to dt change in time duration so substitute d5 and dt value in the average indice per conductor we can substitute d5 instead of pi into p dt instead of 60 by ns we can get the flux pi p ns divided by 60 voltage so already we know that uh, ns equal to 120 f divided by p uh, above the equation the ns is the mechanical parameter we can remove the ns into electrical parameters so we can substitute ns in terms of 120 f divided by p so substitute ns in terms of plus pi into 120 f divided by p 60 into p okay we can get the 2f plus pi voltage so this is the average induced emf per conductor equal to 2 pi plus pi voltage but in case of only we can consider only single conductor but we have to use for the z number of conductors per phase so average induced emf per phase that is equal to 2 f plus pi we can multiply the z number of conductors z number of conductors in series so already we know that z equal to 2 times of t we can substitute z in terms of 2 t we can get the average in this em of per phase equal to 2 f plus pi we can substitute 2 t voltage so finally 4 f plus pi t voltage now this is the average induced em of per phase but uh, we can consider only the sinusoidal wave pump positive half cycle and negative half cycle but uh, we can get only the average value so we can uh, we have to convert the average value into rms value uh, we can utilize for the form factor formula okay form factor it is equal to rms value divided by average value so in terms of form factor we can multiply 1.11 into average value 
சாரம சோலைவா இண்டியூஸ் செய்யாம பின்னியர் கண்டக்டர் அட் இஸ் ஈக்குவல் டு ஃபார்ம் ஃபேக்டர் மல்டிபிள் பை ஆவரேஜ் வேல்யூ ஸோ ஒன் பாயிண்ட் ஒன் ஒன் இன்டு ஆவரேஜ் வேல்யூ சாரமஸ் வேலை வாய்ப்பு இன்ட்யூஸ் செய்யாம பர் ஃபேஸ் ஈக்குவல் டு ஒன் பாயிண்ட் ஒன் ஒன் மல்டிபிளர் பை ஃபோர் எஃப் பிளக்ஸ் பை டி வோல்டேஜ் ஸோ வீ கேன் கெட் த ஆர்எம்எஸ் வேலை வாய்ப்பு இன்ட்யூஸ் செய்யாம பர் ஃபேஸ் ஈக்குவல் டு ஃபோர் பாயிண்ட் ஃபோர் ஃபோர் ஃப்ரீக்வன்சி எஃப் பிளக்ஸ் பை டி வோல்டேஜ் Uh, but the above the equation is true only for the if we can use only the concentrated winding in one slot but we have to use for the distributed winding for the each fold so we can consider uh, we have to use for the distributed winding for the each fold so we can consider uh, we have to consider the kp and kd value so actual induce em of per phase equal to 4.44 frequency of plug spy T into Kp into Kd. Only we can multiply the Kp and Kd value in the equations. So, uh, we can convert the phase voltage into line voltage root 3 times of phase voltage. So, star connected line voltage is equal to root 3 times of phase voltage. So this is the EMF equation of an alternator. Okay, the armchair winding may be in two types of constants are there. Mostly, most of the alternator can be used for the star connected winding. Some of the alternator we can use for the delta connections. Whether the six terms are available means we can connect the either star connections or delta connections. So armchair winding classification mainly single layer and double layer winding, full pitch winding and short pitch winding, concentrated winding and distributed winding. The single layer and double layer winding means one slot occupies only one coil side means it, it is called as single layer winding. In that diagram, one slot only occupies one coil side only. That is one coil side per slot. So this type of... Uh, arrangement is only applicable for small type of ac machines so double layer winding one slot occupy two coil sides uh, this type of double layer winding is more common used for about 5 kilowatt machines in this diagram uh, one slot which occupies a two coil sides top layer occupies top uh, top layer bottom layer is available two coil sides per slot the advantages of double layer winding over the single layer winding uh, mostly it is easier to manufacture and the lower cost of the coils fractional slot windings can be used charted winding is possible lower leakage retents better performance of the machine better emf wave pump in case of generators these are the advantages of double layer winding over single layer winding so double layer winding only applicable for the higher rating machines there the some basic concept of the pole pitch pole pitch it is a distance between center of the two alternate poles it is a distance between center of the pole faces of two adjacent poles it is called as pole pitch it is also named as coil span for full pitch winding pole pitch equal to coil span for short pitch winding pole pitch coil span is less than the pole pitch so pole pitch angle is 180 degree base angle here the coil it consists of two coil sides placed in two separate slots slot pitch means it is the base angle between two adjacent slots here the pole pitch winding if the coil span it is equal to pole pitch so I previously i explained coil span it is equal to pole pitch means It is called as pole pitch winding. So in this diagram, pole pitch, above the diagram, pole pitch, it is equal to coil pitch. That is called as a pole pitch winding. Short pitch winding. If the coil span is less than the pole pitch, it is called short pitch winding. 
that is a difference between full pitch winding and short pitch winding uh, next advantages of short shouted winding or short pitch winding over full pitch winding so the first advantage is copper is saved because one slot is left uh, before that we can complete the winding so copper uh, coil is saved uh, second point the mechanical strength of the coil is increased and also induced amp is improved one so these are the advantages of short pitch winding over full pitch winding saving up coil mechanical better mechanical strength improved induced amp so slot angle it is the angular displacement between two adjacent pole in electrical degree that is slot angle beta equal to 180 degree divided by number of slot per pole. It is a difference between slot angle beta 180 degree divided by number of slot per pole. Pitch factor it is dependent as the EM of induced in the short pitch winding to EM of induced in the full pitch winding. Okay, pitch factor we can define. EMF induced in the short pitch winding to EMF induced in the full pitch winding or vector sum of induced EMF per coil to arithmetic sum of induced EMF per coil. From that facet data, we can derive the formula for pitch factor. So vector sum of EMF. That is equal to AB. AB, we have to uh, write AC plus CB. AB, AC vector plus CB vector. So KP equal to AC plus CB divided by AD plus DP. Vector sum of induced EMA per coil divided by arithmetic sum of induced EMA per coil. So we can write the AC plus CB divided by AD plus DP. You can substitute AC, CB, AD, DP value. AD cos alpha by 2 plus DP cos alpha by 2 divided by AD plus DP. So in this facet diagram, AD equal to DP or BD. We can substitute AD in terms of DP or AD. We can cancel the 2AD, 2AD from that uh, new, uh, numerator and denominator part. We can get the formula for pitch factor. Kp equal to cos alpha by 2. The next distribution factor or breadth factor. The distribution factor Kd equal to EMF induced in the distributed winding to EMF induced in the concentrated winding. Or Vector sum of induced EMF per coil to arithmetic sum of induced EMF per coil. If the coil induced EMF produced in the coil 1, induced EMF in coil 2, coil 3, we can note on the beta value, slot angle. So from that uh, facet diagram, we can conclude the distribution factor distribution factor formula the distribution factor vector sum of induced sum of per coil to arithmetic sum of induced sum of per coil so arithmetic sum of induced sum of per coil that is equal to ab bc cd ab plus bc plus cd from that vector diagram, AB equal to AX plus XB, that is R sin beta by 2 plus R sin beta by 2. So AB equal to 2 R sin beta by 2. Here the AB equal to BC equal to CD equal to 2 R sin beta by 2. So arithmetic sum of EMF equal to 3 times of 2 R sin beta by 2. If there are M slots for distribution, we can multiply m also arithmetic sum for phase of the em of equal to m x 2 or sin beta by 2 where m equal to 3 so next vector sum of induced em of ad equal to ae 
plus ed. It is at the vector sum of inducer m of. We can substitute ae equal to ed equal to r sin m beta by 2. So finally, vector sum of inducer m of equal to 2 r sin m beta by 2. We can substitute the arithmetic sum and the vector sum in this formula. Kd equal to 2 r sin beta m beta by 2 divided by m 2 r sin beta by 2. So finally, we can get the distribution factor formula. Kd equal to sin m beta by 2 divided by m sin beta by 2. Uh, next, uh, one of the two more questions. Uh, what are the causes of voltage drop in alternator? Uh, there are three reasons are here. Three causes are there. Uh, armature effective resistance. Due to the armature effective resistance, some voltage drop is uh, in alternator. And also leakage returns. Armature leakage returns also, some voltage drop is there. Due to the armature returns also, voltage drop is there. So armature leakage reactants, the major common of short leakage reactants and individual leakage reactants and two tip leakage reactants. So synchronous reactants per phase, it is dependent as the combination of that is not leakage reactants plus armature reactants. Where XA equal to fixed TTS armature reaction reactants. Synchronous impedance per phase equal to Z is equal to square root of RA square plus XS whole square. The next one armature reaction the effect of main flux on the armature flux that is called as an armature reaction the effect of armature flux on the main field flux it is also it is named as armature reaction it is a definition of armature reaction the effect of armature flux on the main field flux because we have to use for the two windings field winding and the armature winding in the synchronous generator this armature reaction effect which depends upon the power factor of the load. Uh, for example, so unity power factor, it, uh, it produces a class magnetization effect. Lacking power factor load, it produces a demagnetization effect. Leading power factor load, it produces a magnetizing effect. So unity power factor load means resistive load. Lacking power factor load means inductive load. Leading power factor load means capacity load. So these are the effect of RMC reaction in different types of load. Resistive load it produces a cross magnetization effect. Inductive load it produces a demagnetization effect. Capacity load it produces magnetization effect. So first we discussed about the pure resistive load. We can consider only pure resistive load means uh, north and south pole to produce a main field flux, flux pi. Armature flux it to produce a cross magnetization effect. So, why this waveform is available based on the uh, phasor diagram? So, reference phasor we can take the field flux or main flux. So, due to the field flux, we can generate the induced EMF. Due to the induced EMF, the armchair current is brought through the armchair winding. Due to the armchair current, it will produce an armchair flux. Here, the armchair flux and the field flux, it is 90 degree lacking with respect to field flux. So that's why it is the nature of the cross magnetization effect in few resistive load. So next, we can consider purely inductive load. It will be a demagnetization effect. Here, the north and south pole, it produces a first half cycle, net half cycle, main field flux. But the uh, armature flux, it will oppose us to main flux. How it is possible means we can represent the phasor diagram. We can take the field flux in x axis. It will produce an induced EMF. It is 90 degree lacking with respect to field flux. Due to the induced EMF, it will produce a and there will be a current flow through the armchair winding. It is lacking with respect to voltage due to the inductive coil. Due to the armchair current to the coil, it produces an armchair flux. Here the armchair flux totally opposite to the main field flux. 
that's why it is called as a demandation effect in inductive coil where the main flux decreases dc oxidation next we can consider for the capacity load so it, it will produce mandation effect here the reference pressure field main flux induce am of lacking 90 degree with respect to main flux uh, due to the capacity capacity nature current is leading with respect to voltage here the ia in phase with respect to field flux it produces an arm shear flux also so both are in phase to each other arm shear flux and the field flux are in phase with each other so it produces a mandating effect in capacity load so these are the arm shear reaction effects at the different factor loads The next one is voltage regulation of alternator. Here the definition of voltage regulation of an alternator. It is defined as the change in terminal voltage from no load to full load, which is divided by full load voltage. So percentage of voltage regulation of alternator, it is equal to E naught minus V divided by V into 100. So there are different methods available to determine the voltage relation of alternator. First one is a direct loading method. It is used to directly we can determine the voltage relation of alternator. It is only applicable for small type of alternator. So next one is synchronous impedance method or EMF method. Ambient tens method or MMF method. Zero power factor method or part air triangle method. ASCA method method or modified MMF method. So last one is two reaction theory. This only applicable for silent pole alternator. So first we discussed about the direct loading method. Here the circuit diagram which consists of star connected armchair winding. Here the star connected armchair winding RYB. It is a neutral point. Here the voltage uh, voltmeter is connected across the any two terminals of the two phase winding. Here the ammeter is connected in series with the arm shear winding, any one of the phase of the arm shear winding. Uh, DPS is used initially, it is kept at open position. Here the field winding, here the DPS is used. DC supply is ready to give it to the field winding. Uh, we have to measure the current through the field winding, ammeter is utilized. Variable reactivity is used to vary the field current also. It is a circuit arrangement of direct loading method. Here the prime over mechanical coupling and the prime over. Here the field flux, it is directly proportional to induce EMF from the EMF equation. So once we can determine the induced EMF, we can determine the voltage relation of alternator by that is the direct loading by the E phase minus V phase divided by V phase into 100. For high capacity of alternator, the full load cannot be simulated or directly connected to the alternator. So this method is only applicable for the small capacity alternator. Where are the synchronous impedance method. Next method, synchronous impedance method or EMF method. So circuit arrangement is similar but only slightly different. There is no load is uh, connected across the DPS switch. Only SAR circuit arrangement is connected across this DPS switch. So other circuit diagram is similar to the previous one. Uh, in this case, we get uh, known about the armature resistance per phase. Then we can conduct the open circuit test. With the help of open circuit test, we can uh, draw the open circuit characteristics curve. Then SAR circuit test, we can conduct the SAR circuit test, we can draw the SAR circuit characteristics curve. So from that open circuit characteristics curve and the SAR circuit curve, we can determine the singleness impedance value. So with the help of RA, armature resistance value and the synchronous reactance value, we can determine the no load induced EMF EPS. 
here the keratosis is curve here the x axis uh, field current is taken y axis no load in this am per phase uh, this is the open circuit keratosis curve we can conduct the open circuit test we can draw the open circuit keratosis curve then y t axis it is the armchair current short circuit armchair current so from that uh, short circuit test we can draw the short circuit keratosis curve this keratosis curve it is used to determine the EJS value. The full load arm to current at such a condition, we can determine the synchronous impedance. Z is equal to open circuit voltage per phase divided by arm to current at such circuit conditions. So we can determine the phase EM upon open circuit, phase current on such circuit. The synchronous impedance can be calculated by means of the characteristics curve. So that is the formula available. Is it S equal to square root of RA square plus X square? By knowing RA and HHS, we can determine the excess value. Once the excess is determined, we can utilize the formula E phase equal to square root of E phase cos phi plus IA RA whole square plus V phase sin phi plus or minus IA excess whole square. So from that formula, we can get the E phase value for lacking per factor load and leading per factor load. So finally, we can determine the voltage relation of alternator by EMF method. E phase minus V phase to by V phase into conductor. Here the induced EMF, how it, the, this formula is available means by means of phase diagram of the different types of load. First, we can consider for the unity per factor load. Here the V phase, it is taken as reference. Current, it is in phase with each other. Here the IA area drop, it is in phase to the V phase. IA axis, it is uh, exactly right angle to IA area drop. The combination of resistance drop under the reactance drop, we can get the impedance drop. Finally, we can get the no load in this EM of E phase. It is only applicable for the uh, unity per factor load. So, from that form, uh, phase diagram, we can determine the E phase value. Where the Y equal to B pass, A B equal to IA RA, B C equal to IA access, A C equal to IA ZS, O C equal to E pass. Consider a triangle O B C. Triangle O B C O C square equal to O B square plus B C square. O C square equal to O B square plus B C square. Uh, here the O C equal to E pass square equal to OA plus A B plus O A plus A B all square plus A B C square. So E phase square equal to V phase plus IA RA whole square plus IA excess whole square. So finally, we can get the no, uh, no load in this EMF formula at the unity per factor load square root of V phase IA RA whole square plus IA excess whole square. So next type of load, lacking per factor load. We can take the IA is reference. IA RA drop also. It is... Uh, Draw from the dotted line. A triangle IA axis drop is drawn. Finally, impedance drop also drawn. We can join the no load in this EMF. We can note on the point name O A B C D angle also. So finally, we can get the V phase equal to square root of V phase cos phi plus I A R A whole square plus V phase and phi plus I A axis whole square. So from that phase diagram, we can get the Lacking five factor load formulas. Mm. Here are the advantages of synchronous impedance method. So, main advantages of this method is the value of synchronous impedance is it as for any load conditions can be calculated. At any load conditions, we can determine the synchronous impedance value. The regulation of alternator at any load conditions and load factor can be also determined. The regulation of the alternator at any load conditions and load factor also determined. So, but the actual load need not to be connected to the alternator. Uh, this method can be used for very high capacity alternator only. This method can be used for very high capacity alternators only. Then limitations for EMF method. The main limitation for this method is 
it gives the large value of synchronous reactance it gives the large values of synchronous reactance so this load high values of the percentage of voltage regulation then the actual result high values of the percentage regulation then the actual results hence this method is also called as a pessimistic method because the actual result uh, original result is higher than the actual result so that's why it is called as a pessimistic method the next one is mmf method or ambient tense method so this method of determining the relation of alternator it is also called ambient tense method or rother's mmf method it is based on the result of open circuit test and such circuit tests on the alternator also for any synchronous generator it requires mmf which is product of field current and field winding for two separate purpose tense of field winding for two separate purpose so first one is it must give an mmf necessary to induce radiated voltage on open circuit it must be it must give an mmf necessary to induce the radiated terminal voltage on open circuit voltage it must give an mmf equal and opposite to that of rmc reaction mmf so similar to the mmf method we have to conduct the open circuit test and such circuit test uh, field current uh, we can determine the field current value if1 it is required to produce a rated voltage if2 it is required to produce an rmc current rated rmc current so for this total field current we can get the induced em no load induced em is found from that occ and the relation is calculated here the open circuit characteristics and the source circuit characteristics of mmf method this is the field current one if1 if2 with the help of if1 and if2 we can get the total field current with the help of total field current we can determine the no load induced em once no load induced em is determined we can utilize for the percentage of voltage regulation formula we can determine the percentage of voltage regulation the next one method is zero power factor method or ezpf method or part tier method so it is also called as in part tier method in this operation of any alternator the voltage drop occurs in rmc resistance drop rmc leakage reactance drop so two drops are that we can consider for the two drop also so previously we cannot consider for the rmc resistance drop and the rmc leakage reactance drop but in this case we can consider for also so rmc reaction it is basically mmf quantity in the synchronous impedance method all conditions are treated as emf only in mmf method all the conditions are treated as mmf quantities but is it pf method this based on the separation of xl and the rmc reaction effort it is based on the separation of rmc leakage reactance and rmc reaction effort so rmc leakage reactance xl it is also called as part tier reactance Uh, to determine the rmc leakage reactants we can consider for the emf method we can determine the rmc reactions we can consider for the mmf method the two testers performed on the stator open circuit test and zero power factor test from that open circuit test here the circuit diagram is clear here the load circuit we can purely reactive load is connected through the ammeter from that open circuit test we can determine the occ characteristics curve from that uh, source circuit test we can get the only one set of reading uh, then another test zero perfect test we can determine the field current and the rmc current from that open circuit test switch is kept to open primer to drive the ns speed potential divided from zero to rated value from zero perfect test switch is closed purely inductor load is connected across the alternator it gives a purely inductive load so this is a characteristic curve of zero power factor method so the first one is open circuit characteristic curve second one is zero power factor characteristic curve so in this diagram we can get the rs voltage drop rmc leakage reactance separately i into xl here the rs 
we can determine the R as well as separately. We can determine the RMC leakage data step. Here the PS which gives the field current necessity to overcome demanding RMC reaction. SQ it gives the 